Uh, not anymore. They, no? they, used, they used to. Davidoff moved from Cuba. But why, 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 do, do, you keep smoking? why do you keep smoking Davidoff? Because I like Davidoff. It's oh. a, did you, it's did a you good smoke. Him? Did you meet him? Do I get them for free if I talk about them? No, no. no. But, but did you meet him, actually? Zeno Davidoff, Zeno. yeah. yeah. He, he was your neighbor in, in Switzerland. Well, not exactly my neighbor. Geneva is a long way from Stadt. But it's all Switzerland. Yeah, it's all Switzerland, yeah. <laughs> Compared to America, Switzerland is just a little, little place. It certainly is. I'm, I'm uh, thrilled tonight because my generation grew up uh, with the saint. Even in Portugal, we got to see the whole series, uh, serial. I was about, uh, I was a young, a young man and I enjoyed enormously the way you, you did that character. I envied you. your Volvo Coupe. Was it a nice car? Did you actually enjoy driving it? The Volvo, the P1800. Uh, uh, yes, it was a good car. I've, I've driven them since. You know, the Lion is still uh, very good. It's still with it, yes, the Lion, but the that. engine is not. Of course. And uh, do, you, do you enjoy cars, too? Yes. Which, which cars do you drive? <sighs> dear, dear. I know you had a Jensen Interceptor once. You're wrong. Oh, you didn't? No. Mm. I have a Bentley. Oh. Uh, just an ordinary common old day event. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and, and do you like, what do you like in, in, in life more? Cars, uh, beautiful women, cigars, champagne. And you can't pick one or the other. It's, it's true. And I'm, I'm going to start with a very tricky question. I had a, a friend of yours about a month ago, Christopher Lee, that uh, told me that uh, you had some uh, problems with, with your health. And now, fortunately, everything is, is quite all right with you. And I, I want to ask you, um, did you start to enjoy life in, in a different way nowadays? Do you still waste your time or, or do you find nowadays being back uh, to the world of the, of the healthy with, with such beautiful uh, uh, look, looks, do you cherish life more than you did or not? I appreciate life uh, every day, I mean. I think I'm still lucky to be around. Uh -huh. and, but and I am there, ha there have been changes, even in your love life. And one, one of the photographs, uh, photographs I, love, I love the most is when you forgot all about your British humor, or perhaps you used quite a lot of it, and, and did uh, things that you do with your fingers to the photographs. I, I love that. Because in Portugal, we don't do it like that. May, may I? Show me what you do. We do, we do like this. And in America, in England, you, you do like this. Is it true? Well, what, what, what is the significance? Of I don't know, I don't know, but you did it. You were in the car and you did it to a photograph. And exactly. If I had your life, I, I'd do exactly the same thing. But fortunately, I, we live in a, in a small country, all a big family, so I don't have to. I wish there had been a bayonet on the end of my finger. <laughs> <laughs> Look, do you sometimes want to be Mr. Anonymous? Isn't it hard, isn't it hard being Roger Moore all uh, the time? Well, it's not hard being Roger Moore, you know, because I was born Roger Moore. Uh -huh. No, uh, being, well, No, but to be anonymous, uh, yes, yeah, some, you know, it's, it's very nice when you go into restaurants, you know, you uh -huh. do get good tables occasionally. Uh -huh. uh, when you're trying to shop, sometimes it's difficult. Yes. But most of the time, it's very useful. You're living in, in the French Riviera. Do, do you, uh, uh, are you able to, to stroll around and, and, uh, and go at shops and go to the beach without peop people intercepting you? Yes, because, you know, at the moment I'm living in Monaco and, uh, mm -hmm. and I mean, they're, they're fair, you know, I'm, I'm a poor Monegasque. Yes, the I, rest of them are rich, don't they? Yes, I? I can quite imagine that, yes. That you're a poor Monegasque. Yeah. You've got a liar, you. <laughs> Christopher, you. Told me, Christopher told me, oh, he's, he doesn't need to worry, he's a very rich man. Are you? Uh, I am rich because I'm healthy. Ah. That's the main thing. And uh, you have a nice family, you have three fantastic uh, sons. Your role as a father, do you think you deserve an Oscar for that? Uh, no. No? Not at all. Not even a globe? No, nothing, nothing at all. I just try to be a good parent. I like seeing your son besides you t today. Uh, he's uh, your big friend, your, your younger son, Christian. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The one that looks like Richard. <laughs> he's a... Uh, <laughs> He works with you, he's just, just a son? He... Uh, yes, we, we worked together a few weeks ago in, in Dublin. I, I shot a commercial for a friend uh -huh. of mine, Lord Hanson. Uh -huh. And Christian was on it as assistant director. Uh -huh. And why, what do you miss most in London now that you live in, in Monaco? 
Well, I don't, you know, I don't miss London because I go there very often. Oh. My father is, believe it or not, my father's still alive. He's 91. And uh, so I, I go there as often as I can to see him. And uh, what type of a man is he? I know he was a, a traffic policeman. A policeman, yes. A policeman. Did you, brought, did you, brought, you brought you up in a strict manner or no? Uh, yes, I was brought up to have a, an enormous amount of respect for the law, for my elders. Uh -huh. and to be, to be well-mannered. Do you look up to him, being 91 and having, having such a... Yes, I, I uh, admire my father awfully. He's, uh, he, he's a man of so many talents. Uh -huh. you know, he, he could do everything. He could paint, he could uh, uh, do magic, he could uh -huh. play any musical instrument. He acted. This is why I think, I suppose I got a bit of a bug from him because he, he was a... He started one of the first dramatic societies in the police. Uh -huh. He directed, he did the makeup, he built the sets, he played the lead. And uh, did, did he believe you in you as, as an actor? When did you finally convince him? When did you finally convince yourself that you were an actor with capital A? I haven't. Is that true? No, I think the moment you, you're convinced you're something with a capital A, you, you're very ignorant of what you are. It's true. But uh, there must have been a time when you looked at yourself at the mirror, and besides thinking, oh, my God, I'm gorgeous, which you are. <laughs> well, I'm too, in a strange sort of way. But when the first time you look at the mirror and said, Roger, you're starting to be a good actor now. The thing that you did that, uh, that convinced you finally that you had, you were worth a big career. Uh, no, I've, <laughs> I've, I've never been convinced about that sort no. of thing. No. No, I, uh, I, I, you know, you're embarrassing me. No end. We can talk about other things. Well, let's talk about other okay. things. Let's, let's talk about the wonderful sunny day. In yes, okay. Uh, you tell me, the, uh, your sex life, for example. Uh... It's very nice, thank you very much. Yes, I can imagine. How did you cope with all the women? 90% of the women wants, wants to go to you to bed. Even now. <laughs> You can't imagine what went on in the corridors. Really? Yes. I didn't see any beds in the corridors. Well, the Portuguese women tend to be very understated, so they, they don't show, but they all want... What, how, how do you cope with that? Do you... Um, well, I don't have to. I have doubles that do it for me. Uh, did you use a lot of doubles in your James Bond pictures? Uh, for the dangerous scenes, like getting up out of chairs and... Mm -hmm. May we see one of my favorite uh, scenes from one of your James Bond films? Before that, I want to tell you the same thing I, I said publicly. For me, you're the James Bond. I admire and respect Sean Connery as an actor, but for me, and I think for, for Ian I, Fleming too, you're the, the perfect James Bond. And even now with Pierre Brosnan, I'm not totally convinced. I like this show. He's a nice man, isn't he? Thank you. It's true. I have to get this out of my system. Well, did, you see, did you see the last uh, 007 film? I, I saw two reels of it, uh, because I went out to the studio when they were shooting. My son was working on it. And uh, they showed me the opening sequence, and they showed me the action sequence in the streets of Leningrad with the tank. Or, no, St. Petersburg, rather. Uh -huh. And I thought it was terrific. And I, and I thought the Piers was excellent. Did you miss that role? Good God, no. The day that you had... My bank manager did, but I didn't. Uh, the, the day that you had to, to say to yourself, okay, it's over now. Using your words, I'm going to get out of the horse before it kicks me out. Was it a sad, a sad decision to take? Um, Were you fed up? No, not really. I'd, I'd done seven. That was enough. Mm -hmm. Let's enjoy a bit of your beautiful James Bond.
up and close the toast. Um, well, that didn't require much acting, did it? <laughs> My God. Well, that, that's what I find fantastic about you. You don't have to act, you're there. You know, when we were shooting that, I, I just I remembered uh, where the, the coffin sort of got knocked off by the bridge. We ha you know, when you have to f film, you mm -hmm. have to have a base where you're going to pull your equipment and get mm -hmm. everything ready. And everywhere in Venice, as you probably know, there are churches. And so for the funeral, they put out all the wreaths and they stacked them up outside this church. And there was a real funeral going on. And I said, we cannot go on with the sequence. You know, we got, you know, a little respect. Yes. And the prop man was going mad because they were coming out of the church and taking our wreaths. And how, was, how did you overcome the problem? Uh, you had to wait? Oh, yes. Sister, I waited. And then also, the, you know, the, everything looked so smooth and that, that thing with, with the boat becoming a hovercraft. Is, is that really a hovercraft? No, of course no. not. It was a Ford car with a... With a Oh, please don't tell me that, please. And, and, of course, to make that come out of the water, they, we, we tried six times, and each time it tipped over into the water. And there were about 40,000 tourists there, Americans, Japanese, all standing right. watching. And James Bond kept going straight into the water. A new silk suit. Fortunately, they used to make six suits, for, you know, six copies uh, of every suit I wore. Six times I went into the water. Oh, you shouldn't have told me that. I can't cope with the grief. It's the second uh, shock I have in my Why, life. Why, you're the first one, No, the first one was to know that Santa Claus didn't exist. And now you're telling me that wasn't half a What do you mean Santa Claus doesn't exist? It does? Of course oh, he of course does. he's your neighbor. <laughs> he lives in Hotel de Paris, yeah. <laughs> dans la suite. Roger, and do those contraptions actually work? Uh, some of them. <laughs> for some, for example, some of them are very painful. Tell me one of those contraptions that really did work and that astonished you. Your Aston Martin, for example, was it a, a piece of engineering or is that all bluff? Uh, well, they all, you know, every, every, everything has to be tricked because you, can, you can't. You, there's no such thing as, for example, in uh, whatever film it was, where the car goes underwater and picks up the, you know. That was a Lotus. That was was a, it? it was a Lotus, but it wasn't a real Lotus of underwater. Course. Of course. I mean, those things don't work. Uh -huh. You know, so they have to be faked up, just the same as me. Mm. I have to be faked up as well. Yes, that's hard to believe, but okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll grant you that. And um, uh, you, uh, going back to the Aston Martin, when we saw the, the firearms, was that, that real when you, they came out of the... Do you remember? Uh, was I in that one? Yes. <laughs> oh, oh th that, there was that, a lot... That was the other fella. No, yeah, was it? Oh, yeah. then forget all about yeah. him. And he lives in Spain, not in Monaco. The, there was a lousy actor between Sean Connery and yourself, Court Lesenby, George Lesenby, the, the worst actor in the world. That's Austin. a terrible thing to say. Okay? Yes, but... Poor man, he's not here to defend himself. But he will be. George is coming? <laughs> no, of course <laughs> not. He'll, he's, he's, it would be my latest, latest choice yeah. after David Hasselhoff, which I consider to be the, the worst actor in, in the world. He's bigger than me. I'm not going to say anything at all. Yes, of course. <laughs> Otherwise. But, um, do, for example, did you know, did you get to know Lazenby? Or, or? Yeah, I knew Lazenby. Uh, I knew him when he was doing it. But, you know, you know, but was he really an actor or was he something else? Mm, well, no, he had... Uh, he, how he wasn't he a policeman? He had done a few commercials. Mm. Uh, but, you know, you know, at the end of it, Cubby Broccoli, you know, who used to produce uh -huh. him with, with Harry Saltzman, he said, you know, why, you, why do you behave so badly? And he said, because Harry told me that I was a star and I should behave like a star. And he thought that's what stars did. He would, you know, send, when the car came for him in the morning, he would send it away because it was a Mercedes. And they'd send a Bentley. And he wouldn't go until they got a Rolls Royce for him. You know? Oh, my God. He said, but I was told to behave like a star. And your behavior, do, do you behave like a star? I, uh, in that conception, I hope not. You often think of that when you see other people around you telling you beautiful things and, uh, my God, how, how, am, how am I going to uh, do this, this role without being... Uh, uh, no, I, you know, I, th I think you, you just have to be a realist in life. You know, it's sort of, you're, you're, you're very lucky for a start you know, to achieve any success in our business because it's luck and timing that you, it's luck that you're there in the first place. Uh -huh. And now you're giving 
some of it back through your beautiful work in UNICEF? Well, that, that's an entirely different thing. I don't know whether I'm giving anything back. I, uh, it has become a passion with me, uh, as it does for most people who work for UNICEF. Uh, that, that I think it's much more noble than giving a money or, you know, you're there and uh, I can imagine the, the joy you feel when you are amongst those children and... Uh, well, you, you feel that you yourself are undeniably privileged to be on the... I, I was fortunate enough to take the son you met today, Christian, uh -huh. with me when I went on a field trip through Central America. Uh -huh. And it was very good for him to see how uh, poverty really is. You know, I was asked once when I came back from one of the trips in America, why, why do you go on about the poor? In other countries, they're poor. In this country, and I say, they have never seen poverty until they go to some of the developing countries, the third world. You've talked about a, a man 91 years old, which you admire and love, your father. I have a big friend, older than your father, perhaps the, the person in journalism that I admire the most, he met you once, or twice. His name is Fernand Perse, and he's here with us. <laughs> Fernand, oh, yes. Hello, how nice to see you again. Yes, nice to see you. Yes. Sir, so, so Pastor, would you please sit down? This is a nice topic for... Thank for you. Fernando usually tells... A nice microphone, isn't it? <laughs> Very nice microphone. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> well, <clears throat> my name, you probably forgot. My name is P.E.W.S.A. Say it not the English way, the Portuguese way. In England, called me Mr. Pisa, but I'm Mr. Pesa. Do you know what's Pisa, Pisa in Portuguese? Right. I can guess. <laughs> I just came here to say hello to you once again. Well, that's very nice. Hope it's nice not the last one. And to remember, one day during your last stay in Lisbon, we were having lunch in a restaurant in uh, Lisbon. And uh, with plenty of people around us. And I was sitting next to you, and you took one paper napkin and started drawing. And with your good sense of humor, you did this. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> and I said, Would you please autograph? You did, and they gave it to me. It's disgusting. Remember that? <laughs> Let me remember see that? Yes, I remember that. I, I don't remember doing the drawing, but I, I, it looks like my work. Roger, <laughs> you did this? I don't know what it means. Well, nor do I. No, but someone is sticking <laughs> no, 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 no. something up <laughs> somebody's ass. No, no, this is a game I play where oh. I ask you to give me a two-figure number. Oh. And that is 69. Oh, the number is very nice too. 69. Yes. 69. And he said, and I say, what's the subject? And he said, sex. And so I drew that and I said, Chinese sex. Ah. <laughs> That's right. Beautiful. Uh, and, and you're all too right? young to see it. You <laughs> have to be as old as Mr. Pisser and myself. Mr. <laughs> Pisser. <laughs> I don't do Pisser. that. Don't say that. You're naughty boy. Well, anyhow. <laughs> It's Roger, like please, please don't call him Mr. Pisa, otherwise I'll be forced to call you Mr. Roger Prick. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you've been calling my son This Dickel, is your show. I just came. I'm very glad to meet you here. Hope to meet you next time you come to Lisbon, still. I hope so, and I hope next time I do a cleaner drawing for you. Thank you very much. Well, all I have to say is Mr. Pisa is a gasser. Yeah. Do you see what, what sense of humor does to, to a person? It's one of the most lovely human beings that we have here in Portugal. You have to have humor. To get through life, you have to have mm. humor. Do you have quite a lot? I hope so. I... <laughs> 
<laughs> you can't look in the mirror and not have a sense of humor, can you? Mm. Okay. Um, in the second part of our show, I'm going to ask Roger to draw something for us, a bit cleaner. And uh, while he draws, I'm going to sing one of my favorite 007 songs. Uh, we have a, a saying in Portugal which is, Uma desgraça nunca vem só. Bad, bad things come in double, never come alone. So I'm going to sing, you're going to draw. Well, that's better than me singing and you draw. No, but I, I read you, you have a, a beautiful uh, baritone voice. You even did Andrew Lloyd Webber in, in, in the theater. I did not do Andrew Lloyd Webber. <laughs> Perform. Uh, I, I, I backed out. Yeah. Oh, yes? Yeah. Oh, you didn't do it? Oh, I thought you did. Yeah. Sorry. Misinformation. So, here's a good reason to, to stick with us. Hey, now we're going to go to the canal and see what's going on. That's a, fi a fine piece of music. This was composed by Henry Mancini, no? No, Marvin Hamlish. Oh, Marvin Hamlish. Which? Ba 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 ba. No, that was a man called Monty Monty Norman. Ah. Uh, Mancini did, did that. Uh, Pink Panther. Pink Panther. Yeah. We have uh, a rush from a film we entered doing uh, a Pink Panther movie, that's right, but, yeah. but that's that's not for now. That's for about in ten minutes. We'll show it to the to our audience now, Mr. Roger. Please choose your weapons. Oh, the black one. Okay. Now, the theme I'm going to give you is the spy who loves me. And uh, you have exactly two minutes to show us your designing skills. The spy who loves me. Oh! Nobody does it better. Makes me feel sad for the best. Okay, now, as long as you sang, 
I might as well give you a girlfriend. Where, where do you want the hand? Where, uh, <laughs> where on, on the, not on the piece. Where, huh? where, where, on my wallet. Okay. Here. And here, the V of victory. Now, there you go. This, this is going to be a masterpiece. You'll see it in the Louvre in some time. If you were to take to your desert island, to a desert island, film a book and a record, what would you choose? On a desert island, I take Lawrence of Arabia because I think that was the, probably the best film ever made. Uh, what else do I take? A book. Bra uh, Omar Sharif was here. Was the first guest we had in this new serial. Oh, really? He's very much, very very nice gentleman. We. Well, I hope he said he would take a James Bond film. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't uh, ask him this. Uh, the, book the book I would take... Uh, dear oh Lord. I, th I think I'd take a very boring book. Like, for example? I'm trying to think of a boring book that I could take with me so that I would read about three lines and fall asleep and forget that I was stuck on the desert island. That's true. It's one of the good things in, in reading boring books and seeing bad movies yeah. is falling nicely asleep. And what else do I take? And uh, some music. Some music? Well, I, th I think I'd take uh, Mozart. Mm. I'll second that. Now I want, to, I want to invite you to go with me to Paris for a bit of James Bond. <laughs> I did the promo. <laughs> I more, know. More breathtaking acting. I, yes, I know. But we do, you don't have to prove anything to anyone. So I'm, I'm doing a homage to the editor. That's fine editing. It is very good editing. Isn't it? But um, the, uh, this was uh, filmed in, in Paris, a town that you adore. Mm -hmm. Am I right? How do you get to, to do those things? You have to really to ask the mairie to shut down uh, that part of Paris for, for a couple of days? Well, yes, they were, they were very helpful to us. Uh, and particularly, I did a lot of stuff driving the car without the front end, you know, which is very difficult to drive a car when you've got the wind going in uh -huh. your face. And we'd have uh, police outriders in front, you know, sort of, and they ride motorbikes with two little discs, you know, they go like this, <laughs> <laughs> like, and you go tearing through red lights. Mm -hmm. and like, people can see, you know, they're looking at the policemen go through and you're coming through and you're likely to get killed. That was probably the dangerous bits. It's not you falling on, on the cake, I'm sure. Of course it was. Everything was me. <clears throat> yes. Uh -huh. um, 
you worked, um, of course, you, you did some, some fine acting. Uh, we don't have the rushes here. <laughs> but, uh, for example, in, in uh, The Day I Saw Paris, and here comes Paris again, you acted with Elizabeth Taylor. <gasps> you She's one of them. haven't got that film. No. But uh, wouldn't you like to see it again? We don't have got it, but I'm asking you. You don't? No. Oh, that's all right. Then. <laughs> <laughs> you can say whatever you want to. Um, I, uh, Elizabeth Taylor is for me one of my living legends. Yeah. I don't know why. She has a oh, personality. Nice. Be beautiful woman. Beautiful. Was it nice uh, filming with her? Well, yes, of course. What a wonderful break to have, you know, your first mm -hmm. uh, part in a movie to be playing almost opposite Elizabeth Taylor. Mm -hmm. And do, do you have some living legends uh, for yourself nowadays? Which were, which were your role models in acting? Well, you know, you know I, I, uh, naturally, Laurence Olivier, you know, to, uh -huh. to, to most English actors, Laurence Olivier, or most actors anywhere, I think. Laurence Olivier was probably one of the best examples of a fine, all-round actor and a wonderful leading man. Uh, but in movie actors, I've, I've been very lucky that the people that I admired for their strength on the screen, people like... Gregory Peck and Kirk oh. Douglas and Burt Lancaster, and they all became my friends, you know, which is, which, uh, which I'm very grateful for. That's one of the nice things about having luck as an actor. Mm -hmm. You do get to meet the people mm -hmm. that, that you admire a great deal. It's good being a talk show host, too, because you, you get to see them, too. And there's a man in Portugal that were with you, I think, 30 years ago. Não foi Arturo. A que teve com Roger? 30 years ago. Please. He's, he knows everything about the spying business, and he was your host 30 years ago. In two Hello. Nice to see you again. I have the I have not any design, but a lot of photos of you in Portugal. Ah. With uh, Manuel dos Santos, the famous Torero Portuguese. Do you remember this? You. The bullfighter. <laughs> yes, I'm so brave. <laughs> you remember? But Can you, you see these? You want to see something? Yes. Do they come yes. up big? Uh -huh. Yes. I mean... I so here remember. is you, uh, but did you, you actually uh, meet, meet the bull or not? Manuel okay. Santos. No, but... But how did you ask him if he took the bull or not? No, he's no. just uh, ah. used the, the, the cap. Ah. Uh -huh. and, and they broke... Uh, uh, one finger. My thumb. Uh, <laughs> do you remember that? I, I do indeed. Uh, In fact, the meat you all ate tonight was one that I killed. Uh -huh. Oh, <laughs> yes. And here, uh, in this set, you're... Yes, with me. In, In the what, program. What did Roger do? The saint? The saint. The saint. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and with are the these your only memories of Portugal? What do you mean, my only memories of Portugal? Have you been in Portugal uh, more times than this? Now, this is in London with you. Ah, that was London, yes. A Merry Christmas, yeah, Merry Christmas. to all my friends in Portugal. Yes, yes. Perfect. Thank you. 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 Well, we had three questions about you. The first one, the car, which was a Volo Coupé, about your father and about um, UNICEF. And uh, uh, I, uh, before saying goodbye to you, let's see you do some comedy. It's perhaps the first time I saw you do such a such, um, uh, big comedy act, like in, in the, the Pink Panther film. Do you remember the title of the film? I, I'm not sure whether it was The Curse of the Pink Panther. Let's see it first, then you'll tell me all about it. Darling. Yes, my darling? You're smoking the wrong end. Yes, I knew that. You don't have to tell me I am smoking the wrong end. Do you know why I am smoking the wrong end? No, darling, but I'm sure you've got a very good reason. Right. I am smoking the wrong end. Because I have a very good reason. Are you all right? Yes, of course I'm all right. I'm examining the roof. Can I give you a hand? Thank you. Yo! Ow. Obviously, you are not a smoker. I'm sorry. Your 
have realized you are wearing my ice bucket coat. Oh, I'm sorry, it's it's stuck. That's what that is. Uh, no problem. I'm an expert in these matters. Bend it. Bend over. Oh. Here, let me help. Yes, it is a question of leverage. Yeah. with the set, you know. I've never seen them. No. The, the first time you see the, the, these uh, rushes? No, I never saw the rushes. Never? Not no. even the rushes? <laughs> you did that and then went home yeah. never saw the film? Yeah, I, I we shot it in one day. Uh, and then I left. And the accent is the accent of, of uh, Inspector uh, Leroux. Well, did you see the film? From what I remember, Peter Sellers had already died, and they wanted to use uh, the idea that Cluzo had had facial surgery, and so he th wanted to be anonymous, and so he had himself uh, refaced as Roger Moore. Mm. Fool. <laughs> but what are you going to do, huh? <laughs> oh, well. um, Peter Sellers, being a comedian, he, was, he wasn't he was very, very, very happy person. Not all the time, no. Uh, that's an art you have to develop. I was an, an, an only son too. Perhaps we, um, when we are only sons and don't have any brothers and have to spend quite a lot of time at home without friends, we uh, get, uh, we have techniques in order not to bother ourselves and to get along nicely even when things aren't so so good. I, I, do you agree with this or not? Well, being self-sufficient? Yes. Uh, well, y yes, I, I, I rather enjoyed being the only child because uh, I wasn't necessarily spoiled, but I didn't have to share it with anybody else. I, Did, I have no idea what it would be like to have brothers or sisters. Did you get to be a, a selfish brat like myself or not? Uh, I don't know how selfish you are, so I can't say that I'm a selfish. I'm not. An, I'm not. I'm not selfish anymore. I had to to dis discipline myself in order not to be as selfish as I was with 10, 11, 12 years old. No, I don't think I'm selfish. No, no, no. I'm sure you're not. No, I'm. I'm Just quite so. happy as long as I get my own way. Mm. <laughs> the the last uh, question I have for you uh, before thanking you enormously for your presence here is. You were born and lived uh, a world war. Now it's the Cold War it's, has finally come to an end. Which wars do you hate the most nowadays? nowadays? Which wars or wars? War is the ugliest thing that uh, man has used after God created us. And I think the foulest thing about uh, the world today uh, the people that make money out of making arms, and particularly those that make money out of making mines, landmines. And if you see the destruction that is wrought upon, you know, there's no such thing as an, uh, an innocent victim. Mm -hmm. You know, you're a victim. And it's the children today throughout the world, in Cambodia, in Afghanistan, and now in Yuga, the former Yugoslavia, where all those millions and millions of mines were laid. And you see, you see it today on the news, the children with the limbs blown off. It's the most frightening sight. I can't thank you enough for your presence. I'm you sorry, to, sorry to give you that sober note to no, finish on. No, it's a nice ending. I think uh, we have all have to think sometimes, not only just take life bubbly like the champagne. It was very nice meeting you. Thank you, it was Roger very Moore. nice to Thank you here. very much. Nosso convidado especialíssimo, Roger Moore. Thank you.